Well, hello, and welcome back here to Natch Chagall. Now, you guys have voted for this once again, so 20 likes from yesterday's episode gives you an episode today. And if you like this episode, leave a like, and when we get 20 likes on this one, I'll make another episode, and so on. So I want to thank everyone. It's been really great doing this, and I'm, I'm glad you're all enjoying it, and thanks so much for supporting me on this one. It's been an experiment, but it's been a, a, a good experiment, and uh, I'm really, really enjoying this, so thanks again. Okay, now let's get on with the story, shall we? In the last episode, uh, Miranda was settling into her life of captivity and getting to know the people and naming the statues, and she's just been given a tour of the castle by... Lord Adrian and he's he's a, she's wondering if his family really likes him as much as they claim to because you know, they've all gone off and left him on his own I wonder if that's really true if they really care about him so much why do they leave him here while they all went away somewhere and doesn't Adrian get lonely well I guess he's got Luca and now me oh and those 3D puzzles probably keep him pretty occupied, I bet. Hmm. Human. Miranda. Uh, yeah. He called my name again. I have heard that in some places they have the power is generated by sunlight. Is that true? Oh yeah, you see. We spend the rest of the time talking about modern marvels. Sometimes... Adrian gets a really vicious look in his eye, but most of the time he's kind of like an excited little kid. Talk about mood whiplash. <laughs> I was kind of skeptical about it, but I think Adrian's tour actually helps. I feel like I finally know where I'm going instead of just arriving at places by complete chance. It only took me a what? A week? That means we're about half. Oh, actually, if you look at the top left-hand corner, the moon is half full. We are halfway there through the story already, guys. It took me, what, a week? It wouldn't have been so bad if these hallways didn't seem to go on forever and ever. Where should I go? Let's try the study. I'll make a beeline for the study. I haven't got a chance to look at the books on the shelf yet. Might be something in interesting stuff there. This place is a treasure trove. So many rare old books. I'll just take my time then. Oh, the ever-growing ellipses. The Natchagels are a really interesting bunch. Even just looking at their names, you can tell everyone's really diverse. I can even see it from these books, since there's all sorts of different languages. I can't read a word of Greek, and only took a year of Latin, but luckily there's plenty of books in German and English. I used to think I was pretty cultured, but there's always someone above you, huh? Well, they've had way more time to pick up new languages than me. Oh gosh, the sun's gonna rise soon, I'd better go back to my room. There, was, there sure were a lot of interesting books there, though. Not much in the way of architecture, but... There were a lot of books about music and art. Did you enjoy yourself while going through my things? Yeep. Adrian. Come to think of it, every time I've been in that study room before, he's been there. I wonder if that part of the wing... I wonder if that's part of his wing of the castle, so to speak. Sorry. I, I just remember there being lots of books there, so I was curious and wanted to read them. It's not as if I really mind. Books are meant to be read, after all. However... Hmm? You've kept me waiting. Eh? What do you mean? I went to your room to find you, but you were not present. I decided to wait for you to return. But in the end, you were gone for hours. I find that insulting. Well, I'm sorry I troubled you, but... You knew exactly where I was, didn't you? Why didn't you just come to me if you wanted to talk to me so badly? There are two problems with your reasoning. 
First of all, while the rest of the family is away, I am lord of this castle. It is not my obligation to do things at your convenience, especially as you are nothing but a prisoner here. He sure likes to using his title whatever is convenient for him. So he says he doesn't like being called Lord, but he sure wants, still wants to be treated like one. Doesn't seem fair, really. Secondly, I did not come to find you merely because I wanted to talk. I'm hungry. Ah, uh, but wait! I have already waited for an entire week. I waited for you to get used to the place and for you to calm down. During that time, I've become quite parched. I told you when you first came here, did I not, that I was curious about your taste. Tonight, I aim to satisfy this curiosity at least once. But the sun's gonna rise soon. And? Aren't you guys nocturnal? Hmm. It is true that sunlight burns us. Then... However, I believe that simply adds to the easy excitement, does it not? It does not. I turn my back to Adrian. For some reason, it's hard to look him straight in the eye. That red glow must just pulls you in like a tractor beam. Look, if it's blood you need, you can have it tomorrow night. Like I said, the sun's rising. My blood's not worth risking your life over, is it? You're not even sure it's palatable. You are being strangely divine tonight. Do you object to having your blood soaked that much? It didn't seem like a big, like that big of a deal before, but now that the prospect is right in front of me, it's honestly kind of scary since I don't know what to expect. There, it's no matter. Miranda, I want you to ple freeze in place. All of a sudden, my body stopped shaking. I can't, I can't move. What did you do? Miranda, I want you to hold very still and try not to say anything that will displease me. Just stop moving. Stop talking. There's a voice in my head telling me what to do. It's similar to my voice, but it's, it's not me. Yes. My body's not doing what I want it to. No, I... The sun... God, half of me doesn't even care if Adrian burns to a crisp at this point. Better him than... It hurt for a second when his fangs broke my skin, but then... A hell of a big ellipsis. The inside of my head is all fluffy. Something deep inside is telling me to stop resisting. You are finally quiet. It is strange to hear such silence after I finally got used to your chattering. Very well. You may speak, if you wish. The voice in my head is gone. Was it really his doing after all? I can't believe vampires have this kind of power. It took everything I had to resist, giving in to what he wanted me to do, and even then, it barely did anything. It is a difference in villain power. As things stand now, you are much too starved to fight against me. What's happening? Hmm. But does it feel good? Ah, it's a, that's a matter of course. It would be rather difficult to suck blood from something that continues squirming and crying. This sort of thing is necessary for both our own safety and the praise. Why? Why would you worry about the praise safety? We vampires have to drink living blood. Blood from a dead creature both tastes disgusting and is not sustaining. Contrary to what many would believe, we are usually not killers. Not usually. Bleh. What is it? No. It's simply different from what I was expecting. Your taste. I would not say that it is the finest quality blood I've ever had, but it possessed an interesting flavor that I have not tasted in quite some time. Is it because you are foreign, perhaps? 
Do you not get um, imported foods often? No, it is hard to bring them all the way back to the castle. Because I cannot leave here, I... Bleh. What's wrong? No, it is nothing. I merely remembered something slightly unpleasant. The sun, the sun is about to rise. You should head back to your room and rest. Ah, waiter. He's vanished. Even though he just attacked me all of a sudden, I can't bring myself to be mad at him. Is it because of his persuasion powers? Or maybe it's just how he looked in the end. Why is Adrian being left alone in the castle? Why can't he leave? Is it that he's not allowed to, or that he won't? There must be a reason why he's here with only Luca for company. I don't like it either. For some reason, for someone who hates being bored, being cooped up in a castle for almost 200 years doesn't seem like much fun. The more I think about it, the more questions I have. It's been a whole day since I had my blood sucked. I guess Adrian must have felt bad what happened because I didn't see him all yesterday. Maybe I'm over overestimating his kindness, though. Having him inside my brain like that, it was kind of scary. It's already the 18th. Pretty soon the 22nd's going to roll around and the rest of the Natchtigals will be back. What's going to happen to me when they return? I've gotten aware I can find my way around the castle now. I feel like my chances for escape are higher than before. But if I decide to risk it and stay, I need to make sure that I'm super prepared so I don't get surprised like I did before. Actually, getting my blood sucked wasn't that bad, but... Luca and Adrian. There's still so much I don't know about them. Four more nights, huh? Well, my wound's just about healed up, so I can remove the bandage now. The more I think about what happened, the more okay I am actually with it. Heh. <laughs> I'm far too optimistic to be kept down. I knew from the first night they were going to suck my blood at some point. I think I just let my guard down after they kept me waiting so long. In the back of my head I knew I should be more careful, but oh well, hindsight is twenty twenty. they say. Now I, I know what to expect. Bleh. Isn't that Adrian over there? He's just staring at the moon. Right, it's going to be a full moon in a few more days. Though, I might not live to see it, huh? Oh, he's gone. He just bled and left. Hmm, it's getting pretty chilly, so I think I'll go back inside. I'm already done eating my food anyway. I'm good and stuffed. Oh, hi there. What are you two up to? We're just passing the time. I finished all of the puzzles the humans have for sale. It is your job to entertain Lord Adrian, human. Why don't you make yourself useful? I'd be happy to. Um, what do you want me to do? Can you not think of something yourself? If I have to come up with something, it defeats the purpose entirely. All this human does in her spare time is read. I wonder if she even has friends. Hey, of course I have friends. Is that why you came to Belgium all by yourself? I came here to study. I hang out, with, hang out with my friends plenty when we're all together. What do you normally do with your friends? Um, go shopping? Rejected. Lord Adrian cannot leave the castle. Oh, and we watch movies together. Rejected. We have no electricity. We gossip over lunch? Blair. Blair. What's with these disappointed looking faces? Do human girls not do anything interesting together these days? Oh, that is a loaded question. It's not my fault you guys don't have any board games or electricity or something. Oh, that is it. Board games. You guys have some? It is not a board game. Exactly. But I believe there is a deck of playing cards in the study that Osana gave me some time ago. I would nearly forgotten all about them. It's been so long. To the study! Ah, here it is. 
Why do I have to play two? Oh, come on, Luca. No one likes a whiner. I think you'll soon under exact understand exactly why those cards are hidden away and forgotten in the first place. Now then, I shuffled and cut the deck. Shall we play a game of poker? Sure, I'm warning you though, I'm pretty good. We'll see about that. Blair. Oh, these ever growing ellipses. Blair. I believe that makes my tenth straight fin. How the hell does he keep on winning like that? Poker's half luck, isn't it? I'm not the best player ever, but I should at least win every once in a while. Wait. Is this what Luca is talking about? We made eye contact, but then he just looked away. Adrian's not cheating, is he? No, that doesn't seem like his style. Oh wait, Luca told me before that Adrian's a second generation vampire, and he's got more powers or something. Maybe those are giving him an edge. I guess he won so often that his siblings got tired of playing with him, and besides, this guy's a sore winner among sore winners. I wouldn't even be surprised if there was if he were to start dancing on the table next time he wins. Jeez. So, I'm not going to give up that easily. Hey, how about we raise the stakes? Don't you think playing without any bets is a little boring? Hmm, that sounds interesting. What do you have in mind? Well, it's not like we have anything to bet, but we humans play a version of this game called Strip Poker. Have you ever heard of it? Strip Poker. No, I cannot say I've ever heard the name. My lord, I suggest you stop. It's really fun, and never stop. Just don't ever stop. If you've never played, you should do it at least once. How dare you interrupt? Oh, vines. Let us have a go, then. What are the rules? Well, the person with the worst hand has to strip. Strip? She means remove your clothing, my lord. Whoever loses has to remove at least one article of clothing. That's the rule. Oh, is that all? Ha! And there I was wondering you were getting so worried about, Luca. I accept. I do not think it is fair for Miranda when she only has one layer of clothing on. However, I so, so I propose that the loser removes all of their clothes. My lord, I have a bad feeling about this. Don't be ridiculous, Luca. Neither of you have bested me a single time this evening. What have I to fear? His true intentions came out. Oh well. He reacted just like I thought he would. Now all I have to do is win. Come on, Miranda. Believe in the heart of the cards. Oh dear, Yu-Gi-Oh reference. Very well. It's my turn to be the dealer, so I should cut the deck. This is it. I have a straight flush. Truly, what a spot of bad luck for me. Well, Luca, it seems your time has come at last. Congratulations are in order. You've finally beaten me in cards. He's so melodramatic. However, I shall at least triumph for Miranda. I have here four of a kind, four nines. Not the best hand I've been dealt tonight, but a decent one. Now then, Miranda, I do hope you are prepared to be a good sport and... I've got a royal flush. Read them and weep. Come again? I lay my cards out on the table and show them. My luck came in at just the right moment. Look, a royal flush. Blair. It, it is a royal flush. Just one moment, does that mean that I had the first hand? Indeed, my lord. I won't do it! Oh my god, his face looks like a tomato. I guess even vampires can blush if they really have to. I refuse to do it! This is exactly why I tried to warn you, my lord. She, she must have been cheating. You and I both know that she, we would have instantly noticed if she'd attempted such a thing. Why did you agree to play if you were so desperate to keep your clothes on? You were supposed to lose. 
Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Okay, right, quick save. Alright, hopefully that quick saved. And are you trying to hide something? Do we want to tease the angry vampire? Are you going to be a good sport, aren't you? Yeah, let's try this one. Now then, Lord Adrian, I do hope you're prepared to be a good sport. Yes, a man mustn't go back on his word, my lord. I, I am tired of this silly game. I am firing from my room ere the sun arises. Air? But the sun's not rising for hours. There he goes. Ah, I spent a good while walking around the castle. It feels nice to be able to stretch my legs. Hmm, it looks like I've still got some time before the sun rises. Where should I go? Let's try the courtyard. I'll go to the courtyard. Maybe grab a bite from the kitchen while I'm still while I'm over there. Ah, it's a nice night with a gentle breeze, and I've got some bacon to eat. This is the life. Maybe I'm getting a little too used to this. Too bad I'm a simple girl who likes to eat well. Is human food really that delicious? Whoa! There's that horse again. I really didn't see you there. Well, yeah, some of it is. I don't know anyone who turned down bacon. Really? Do, do you want to try some? I'd rather not. Now that I think about it, he hasn't sucked my blood even once since I've been here. Hey, is human blood really that great? Why do you ask? Well, I've tasted my own blood before when I had a split lip and stuff like that. It just kind of tasted kind of metallic and gross to me. Vampires taste blood differently. I see. Blair. I guess the conversation's over. I'm done eating anyway, so I'm just going to get up and walk back to my room. It was nice talking to you, Luca. I'll just be heading back. Wait. But what? Did his, his voice just drop a little? When were you given leave to go? Huh? Uh, I, I guess I wasn't. I just thought. You assumed that it would be alright for you to simply do as you please. I suppose that is partially my fault for being too lenient. What? What's all with you all of a sudden? I'm sorry if I did anything to annoy you, but... The scent of your blood. <laughs> He's right in front of me now. I can't get away. It's particularly sweet smelling tonight. Compared to the terrible scent you were given off before, it seems quite delicious now. What do you mean? You know, blood tastes sweetest when the prey is still blissfully unaware of its situation. When it's innocent and willing. That's why the strongest vampires have such potent persuasive abilities. If the head of the family wished it, you would immediately surrender your life to them. You'd do it so willingly that it would be as if you came up with the idea yourself. You were uneasy the first few nights, but now as if, if you actually enjoy it here, you're making light of us both, of your entire situation. Oh, I get it now. You haven't been able to get out much since I've been here, so you're thirsty, right? That's why you're so cranky. Certainly. I haven't fed once since you've been here. So, his bloodlust was just making him crazy or something. I never would have thought it that Luca could be this aggressive. No, that's wrong. He's always been this aggressive since the moment we met. Luca's right. I've been underestimating them. I keep doing that. I can't bring myself to just think of them as monsters eh, somehow. Even now, I... If you're thirsty, then go ahead. Just take a bite. That's what I'm here for, isn't it? You don't get to decide that. I personally feel that biting is a very intimate thing. When a vampire connects with their prey like that, even if momentarily, there's a deep bond. I've always had a distaste for that sort of thing. No, I will have you, but I shall use this. 
That's a knife. Don't tell me he's going to... Ah! He just sliced open my arm. I couldn't even react. That really hurts. As I thought, it's delicious. I thought you said it tasted better when the play prey was blissfully unaware. I'm not blissful or unaware. I said it would taste sweeter, not better. I always hated sweets. <laughs> Just because I'm a third generation vampire, don't make the mistake of thinking that I'm not capable of doing anything on my own. I never thought that. Really? Even though you were letting your guard down while thinking that surely I wouldn't do anything to you without Lord Adrian's permission. <laughs> I don't need his permission to do anything, and certainly not for this. I don't understand the relationship between Luca and Adrian. He serves Adrian so loyally, but at the same time he seems to have a really deep bitterness and disdain towards his lord. One thing's for sure, Luca might serve the Natchigal family, but he doesn't consider himself inferior to them. He's punishing me for disrespecting him, because I'm the only thing here he thinks he can subjugate. But is that really all there is to it? Okay, we have done 25 minutes, and I think we're going to get at least one more episode out of this, which is going to happen if you guys give this episode 20 likes. I really would love to see the end of this, and I also would love for you guys to tell me, which vampire do you prefer? Is it going to be me, or is it going to be me? Ha ha ha, I know which one you will pick. So, let me know in the comments what you like. Give this a like if you want to get another episode. And until then, I have been Simon Parsons. This has been Natch Tegal. Thank you, and good night.